Uh, I am grateful to the organizers to have invited me at a very late stage. That is why I am only being given 15 minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, this is, of course, you have seen this picture before. This is Professor Salam when he was uh, a couple of years before, a couple of years old. And uh, what is written here is, you see, this was Zaila Janko, that district Jang is proud of him. You might be able to read it, you see. I'm just showing you, uh, aha, this one is a picture which uh, was uh, which was taken in the, in the ICTP, the present ICTP, many, many years before. Uh, I call it as a picture of three generations. But of course, yes, this is my child, this is Professor Salam, he's my supervisor, then Dirac, he was not the supervisor of Salam, working for some other person was there. But I call it a picture of three generations. This is a Japanese, I have forgotten his name. But I, I like this picture and uh, uh, I tell my grandchildren, you see, look at what your grandfather was at some stage of his life. Okay, this is the grave of Professor Salam. And uh, the, one would say that this is the end of him, but this is not the end of him. This is the physical end of him, but the spiritual end, we are seeing it, we are all gathering here, and oh, the ICTP is getting its wings in different places, and so from, from my point of view. But anyway, see, this is uh, the, the, the grave in which, he is born, in which he is buried. This is in Pakistan. And according to his will, uh, one of his, uh, his mother is also buried quite close by in the same area. Uh -huh. This is another picture which, of course, Professor Duff showed, and it disappears in his book. And uh, mm, he did not know many of the people. This is myself, and this is Ansaruddin Sayyid. If you uh, look at the talk, yeah, this is okay. Now they have written all the names on it, you see. All the names, this is in the picture which has come to me from Pakistan. They have given all the names, and Professor Duff, he's not here, but I, I would send it to him so that he would know all the... And many of us, you see, this was uh, a Pakistani. This is Pakistani. Uh, this is a Japanese, you see, who collaborated with me also. Pakistani, Pakistani. John Strategy, very well known. I, I believe that Bob Dilbert is not there. This is my son, and this is Arif Azuma, also another Pakistani. Many of these Pakistanis are dead now, but some of them are alive. But this is, is a picture which, of course, uh, was held uh, probably after Professor Salam's inaugural lecture. Uh, Professor Salam and then uh, Kibble and many others, you see, those who are in it. Uh, I, I like this picture, but anyway, this is the end of the picture, you see. And uh, this is the, uh, the presentation. I'll j just go through it very fast. Uh, go through this very fast. The, the exercise started with, uh, with something which I did with one, one of my students, but this is the main uh, inspirator, Van Bick, from South Africa. He has been the president of the uh, South African Physical Society for many, many years. I have tried to contact him to tell him that what I was doing, but uh, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get in, uh, in touch with him. He wrote a paper on O31, uh, O31, and of course tried to decompose it into products of uh, two uh, or groups. We tried to do this in this paper, the exercise is on this part, that SO4 and SU2 cross SU2, there is a homomorphism between them. Homomorphism in the sense that two of these is and go, go into the same one. We, I will show some, something like that afterwards in a couple of minutes, which I have at my disposal. Uh, so we are looking at the fine, uh, and uh, he wrote that at some stage, uh, in, in one of the exercises, uh, he, he arrived at a problem which he claimed to be a formidable non-linear problem. 
Uh, I'll concentrate on it at the end. I'll show you what the problem was. You see. And uh, fortunately, I was able to solve it and together with one of, one of my students, you see, so, and it appeared in, in a series of one of the conferences somewhere. <laughs> but uh, let's first of all look at see, what's the sort of problem we are looking at. It's a finite rotation of SO4. What is SO4? SO4 is the uh, group of all, uh, what do you call it, orthogonal transformations be determinant one orthogonal transfer in four dimensions. And they have to be decomposed in terms of uh, two of these, something like that. But first of all, you see, any orthogonal transformation in four by four, four by four orthogonal transformation, there are 16 elements. And it is well known that there are only six independent ones. The question is, how do we write it in terms of six independent ones? This is, this is the exercise we found, found with it and beautifully. So uh, the exercise starts here, you see, you look at, take two vectors, A and B, which are orthogonal to one another, and the sum of their magnitudes is equal to one. In terms of these matrices, you uh, compose a matrix U, which is an, uh, obviously, this is an anti-symmetric matrix. These are, I, these are zeros, anti-symmetric matrix. And not only this, but also, uh, yes, co compose is dual also. This is a dual. And then, it's strange that this matrix is q with minus u and u d uh, this one the dual dual also has got its q with minus u because the cubes are e equal to minus u or whatever it is you can do this exponentiation and exponentiation you see would look like this you see this is the exponentiation exponentiation of u and this is the exponentiation of its by d d phi isn't it? something like this, because ud, q, etc., they all get absorbed in cos theta sin theta. So we can look at this delta 1, which is a, b, a, b, theta phi dependent, as the product of these two. And of course, you see, these two commute. Uh, and not only, the, uh, yes, ud, u is equal to 0, something like that, you see. Uh, u, u, d, u, d, u is equal to 0. So you can multiply these two. And when we multiply again, you see, you get some sort of an expression for it, for delta 1. Now, delta 1 is determinant. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, we can calculate the determinant very easily because delta 1, delta 1, t is equal to i. Delta 1, t uh, is, the, uh, is obtained from this one by replacing u by minus u, but because the, these are uh, uh, these are anti-symmetric matrices. So this one will be one, and this one will be one. As a result of it, you see that delta 1 is definitely an orthogonal matrix. But what is this determinant? Determinant, we can now calculate the determinant of delta 1 would be plus or minus 1. So we concentrate on the determinant equal to 1, because that is the one which is uh, related to i uh, in a continuous manner. So, so this delta 1 now depends upon a and B, theta and phi, but A vector and B vector, they are orthogonal ones, and some of their squares of their magnitude is equal to one. So there are two conditions on A and B. So there are four parameters from there, and two parameters are coming theta phi, exactly six parameters which we, we want. So this is a general sort of a representation, general sort of a representation of an S of four matrix in terms of six parameters, six parameters, whatever the physics is, that is a different story altogether. In terms of six parameters, A and B are thousand vectors and theta and phi. Just to see their significance, you see, first of all, we just uh, concentrate on B equal to zero. When B equal to zero, it becomes even a simpler sort of a thing. Okay. Uh, no, I want too much, too much ahead. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is A0, 0, 0, 5, and this is A0, zero, theta, 0, B, I put equal to 0. So when I put theta equal to, uh, phi equal to 0, then it becomes RA theta. RA theta means that this is a rotation about the axis A, axis A, which is a three-dimensional vector, axis A, about it, about it, uh, through an angle theta. The other one, when you put b equal to 0, this becomes equal to, with all this exercise and so on, a0, i4. So this, the axis 
of the rotation is perpendicular to A and perpendicular to I4. So this is in the, in the, in the uh, so this is a rotation in the plane of I and I4, the fourth axis. So they, the two rotations are perpendicular to one another. So now I put B equal to zero. The question arises, can I do more general than that when B may not be equal to zero? So before that, let's try to reverse the thing, you see. Can you write AB theta phi in terms of delta one? Is in terms of this one. If I give you this matrix, four cross four, uh, orthogonal matrix, can I calculate these angles? If I give you these angles, I know how to calculate this one. All these calculations was in that direction. So the, to do it, you should be calculate the traces of these matrices, very easy exercise, and define a new quantity M, which is delta one minus delta one T. So anti, anti symmetric component of it. If we do this, then of course, you see, uh, the exercise just go on. This is cos theta minus cos theta becomes something like this. Cos phi becomes like this. In terms of trace of m or m square and the trace of lambda 1 squared and so on. So the quantities are lambda 1 and m, m, which I defined just now. And you can calculate a and b also. So you, all these, the exercise goes through in the other direction. So if you give you delta uh, lambda 1, if I give you lambda 1, I can calculate all these six parameters explicitly. And they will, of course, satisfy a dot b is equal to 0, etc. So I gave you the cyclic function. So when I put b equal to 0, then it is the rotation in a certain uh, about, the, about the axis a, that is ra0, and the other one was in the, in the plane of a and a4, something like that. The question arises, you see, the, if I did not put b equal to 0, what would happen? Would there be something similar to it happening? And this is the exercise which, of course, you see, this is parallel to von Blick's work. He defines these four vectors. These four vectors are orthogonal to one another, and they are of magnitude of one magnitude, and they are orthogonal, so they form an orthogonal system of four vectors. The question arises, how do U and UD, the matrices which I wrote before, how do they operate upon them? This is the sort of operation that happens. Then lambda 1 on A gives you this thing. So lambda 1 on A is something like a combination of a cos pi and A and D, combination of A and D and pi. And the same happens to lambda 1 on D. So you can see now that lambda 1 is actually rotating in the plane of A and D. The other one is rotating in the plane of the other. So this is the, con the con conclusion uh, I can read for you. Uh, we conclude that l lambda 1 AB theta 0 is a rotation by an angle theta in the two plane spanned by BE and keeps the AD plane invariant. It's exactly the same sort of exercise which we were doing for the special case. Okay, now this is the meat of the problem. Representation rotations by unitary matrices, the uh, homomorphism which I was mentioning. <laughs> Do I have five minutes or what? Okay, I'll take about five minutes. Okay, so this is the representation of rotation by unitary matrices. So if I give you two unitary matrices V and W, then I can calculate this trace by writing sigma or rho. Sigma and rho are calculated from the, these are the related to poly matrices. And then I uh, write it as R mu nu. And then R mu nu has satisfies all the properties which I want. The question is, can I reverse it? And the reverse can also be done. V and W can be calculated in terms of R and R. These are complicated expressions, and to derive them will not be very easy. It will take pages of work. But it doesn't matter, you see. It does work. The question is, you see, plus minus V and plus minus W. That tells you the homomorphism. You see that there are two solutions to the problem this way. They give me one, I have two solutions. Give me V and W, I have a unique solution for R. And then, Okay, I have gone back, I think. Okay, it doesn't matter, you see, whatever it is. So this is the sort of thing you see which is happening here. Okay. Uh, th this one, there are many ex uh, examples, you see, which can be then 
calculated on the basis of this exercise. The main point is that you have decomposed a 4 plus 4 matrix in terms of product of 2 plus 2 matrices. And to deal with 2 plus 2 matrices is much easier than to deal with 4 plus 4 matrices. So uh, the, the, the sort of uh, rotations which are taking place, you see, they will be much easier to handle once they are transformed into uh, 2 by 2 context. Okay, then there are, I, we have given uh, a lot of uh, this one examples, you see, where it could be useful. A product of arbitrary rotation or this and that. I'll only go to one, one, yes. I'll go to this one. This is the last one, this equivalence of this RAB theta zero and R A B zero theta. We have defined these before, these two rotations, you see. These two are equivalent in the sense, you see, that you should be able to find a rotation which takes N to this. This also takes, this side is the same, the, the ones which we were interested in. So if you want to show that this one is related to this one, re reverse, and then you will see that they, if you can calculate N and U. N appears here, U appears here, or something like that. If you can calculate these, then you will be able to show that these are equivalent. And the exercise, what I was saying, you see, it is easier to write in terms of Bs than in terms of the other ones. So if you write in terms of Bs, and of course, you see, all these things have been calculated before. So you will get A and B, and the sort of, sort of angles, and so on, you see, A and B in terms of N and U. A and B in terms of N and U. Our job is to find N and U. This is where conflict comes to this stage uh, for his own problem. And then he says, this is a formidable nonlinear problem. Because this is N, this is N L dot U. So how do you get N and N dot U, uh, N and U in terms of A and B? And what we notice was, you see, that if you keep the problem as it is, then it looks very formidable. But if you look at it in terms of A and A cross B, then it becomes a linear problem. A and A cross B becomes a linear problem, and then this is the determinant, and of course, then you can calculate uh, A and uh, N and U, exactly what you want to see, N and U, which satisfy N dot U equal to, N dot U is known somewhere. N dot U is probably this one, I don't know, yes. N dot U is giving a somewhere. So n dot u is known, so n and u can be calculated, the, the, the reverse process has been done. So as a result of it, you will see that uh, AB theta phi is, uh, is uh, equivalent to the other one. So uh, the paper is a very long one, but anyone who is interested, uh, I could uh, give him a copy or send him on the email. Uh, but the main point is, you see, it is a so-called formidable problem, which seem to be not so formidable as it seemed to von Flick. Uh, and uh, I, I, I feel the inspiration is the main thing. You see, the scientific community is becoming an international community. And mine is a small component of that international thing. I am. One quick comment. That historic photo that was taken on the roof of the Blackett building. I didn't follow what he was. What is he saying? What is he saying? I, I, I'd, I'd like to tell you that there were some unknown people there. He's I, can fill, about the photo. I can fill okay, you okay, in. Okay, photos. Okay, okay. Let me go back. Can you uh, can you go back to the photos? First one. This one or the one Next. before? This no, one. No, after. Next. 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 This one. Next. Yeah. yeah. There are some unknowns, you say, there. I can think I can fill you in on these before you hand it over to Michael Duff. Thank you. Do you see your name or not? No, I was in America, I think, at the time. <laughs> OK, you were in America, yes. <laughs> this is somebody who sent me from Pakistan. So uh, the names are there. I couldn't see it. But they have been able to locate the names of everything. OK. Thank you very much for the comment. Yes.
uh, I enjoy it, you see, because you see, these are the, these are the memories. <laughs> memories. 60s. Uh, there are no more questions. Let's thank Okay. Thank you very much, sir.